Hi everybody, welcome to Scuba Dive Magazine. On many scuba regulator second stages today, you'll find one or two switches. One is for breathing adjustment, but the other is more useful and can help to interrupt a free-flowing regulator. They're usually called a Venturi switch or a pre-dive lever, and they're a very handy feature to have on a second stage, especially your Octo. But why do we need one, and what does a pre-dive switch actually do? One word that you'll see a lot with pre-dive switches is Venturi. Venturi was an Italian physicist from the 18th century that discovered that when fluids pass through a restriction, there's a shift in pressure that can draw surrounded gas or fluids in. We actually use this effect along with the Bernoulli effect in jet engines and fire extinguishers to boost airflow, but in a scuba diving regulator that you need to breathe from, it can be a bit much at times. But it's even worse if the second stage comes out of your mouth. Without your mouth and your lungs to actually stop the flow of air from coming out of the second stage, the air just rushes out and creates a vacuum inside of the body of the second stage. And as far as the regulator is concerned, that vacuum could be you sucking on the regulator to breathe from it. So it opens the valve even more and it lets even more gas in and it just becomes a vicious cycle that we call an exponential freeze flow. There's also the added problem that when gases go from high pressure to low pressure, they get cold. And if there's any water around it, as if when we're scuba diving, then the valve can actually freeze. If ice forms around that valve, then it can freeze in the open position, making it far harder to close the valve. A pre-dive switch quite simply disrupts the clean airflow inside of the second stage, so it disrupts the Venturi effect. The switch itself turns a small shroud that you can rotate so that the basically covers the outlet of this section inside of the second stage. Whilst diving without a Venturi switch, when you inhale and the valve opens, air will flow out from this hole, which is pointed towards your mouth. But when you switch the pre-dive switch, the shroud then covers up this hole enough to disrupt that airflow, create a bit of turbulence inside of the body, and even redirect some airflow back towards the front of the second stage to help push the diaphragm forwards, which again helps to close the valve. So why don't we just leave the pre-dive switch on or scatter the airflow from the beginning? Well, you can still breathe from a second stage that's in like surface mode, but it does increase your work of breathing. When that second stage is in your mouth, it should be switched to a dive mode for an easier, smoother breathe that's less effort on your lungs. It won't be hard to breathe from, but over an entire dive, it just adds extra effort and you'll find yourself just a little bit more exhausted, especially after longer dives. When should you use a pre-dive switch on a regulator? Well, basically whenever the second stage is out of your mouth. When you're setting up your equipment onto a cylinder, switch that pre-dive switch on. This will help to prevent a free flow when you first pressurize them. You can do your buddy checks, your pre-dive checks with your buddy, but when you're about to enter the water, then switch that switch off when it's in your mouth. Leave your octo switched on. Octos tend to free flow on the surface during entry, and the pre-dive switch can help to prevent losing too much gas and attracting the attention of the entire dive site. In the water, if you need to take your second stage out for whatever reason, it's best to flick that pre-dive switch back on and dial in the breathing adjustment just to help prevent losing any gas. And always be pointing the mouthpiece downwards whenever it's out of your mouth. Second stages tend to free flow when they're upside down. If it's mouth upwards, they tend to free flow, so just try and point them downwards. Put simply, switch it on when it's out of your mouth and then switch it off whenever it's in your mouth. Some regulators have automatic venturi levers that do it themselves based on like airflow and things. So don't worry if you don't immediately see an obvious lever on a second stage. Chances are it may already have some kind of a system built in, especially on more expensive regulators.
So a pre-dive lever basically ruins the performance of your regulator so that it doesn't become too efficient. The greater the airflow out of your second stage can create a vacuum that makes your regulator think that you're breathing so it delivers more and more gas and without your mouth in the way to block that gas it will just continue to vent until your tank is completely empty. If you do have a free-flowing regulator the best thing to do is to block the mouthpiece with your fingers as soon as possible. If that doesn't stop it then you can crimp the hose to try and restrict airflow to the second stage and then gently open it back up again to resume normal function but if the valve has frozen open or the mechanism itself has malfunctioned it slipped an o-ring or something then the only way to prevent losing all of your gas is to literally get to an alternate air source and close that cylinder valve but a pre-dive switch is a very useful thing to have on a regulator especially octos or regulators that are going to spend any time in the water out of your mouth. If there are any other bits of regulators or diving equipment that you'd like me to explain or show you, then just let me know down in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And remember to check out our magazine. It's available both in print and digital versions around the world and you can take a look at a free sample by visiting app.scubadivermag.com. That's it for this week. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.